इन्हीं शब्दों के साथ जय हिंद जय भारत श्री वी कलानिधि जी सर थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर गिविंग मी एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू स्पीक ऑन दिस वाइट पेपर ऑन द इंडियन इकोनॉमी सर सर दिस टाइटल वाइट पेपर ऑन द इंडियन इकोनॉमी हैज गॉट मी सरप्राइज बिकॉज वेन यू टॉक अबाउट वाइट पेपर ऑन इंडियन इकोनॉमी वॉट टाइम फ्रेम आर वी टॉकिंग अबाउट सो दे आर टॉकिंग ओनली अबाउट द लास्ट ट्वेंटी ईयर्स आई वुड लाइक टू हाईलाइट वॉट हैज बीन द स्टेटस ऑफ द इंडियन इकोनॉमी प्रॉबली प्री इंडिपेंडेंस पीरियड ऑनवर्ड्स If you look at the Mughal period, we boast saying that the India had about 25 to 30 percent of the world's GDP, sir. Subsequently, even when the Mughals were ruling here, they ensured that the wealth of the country stayed in the country, and we were a prosperous nation, sir. But subsequently, during the British rule, we were systematically looted. Where 1947, when we got our independence, India's GDP was only about one percent of the world's GDP, sir. Since then, from 1947. our uh, late uh, prime minister honorable uh, jawarla nehru he was having the biggest challenge of nation building sir when we got our independence there were so many countries which raised aspirations they said india will not stay as a nation it will soon integrate this was the criteria under which the government was functioning at that point of time and you also know that the number of wars we had earlier with pakistan and with china all these things had to be taken care of and at that point of time the biggest threat to our nation was poverty sir so during that period things like green revolution white revolution to improve agricultural produce to improve milk production these needed to be focused on in fact during those periods our gdp growth was probably 1% or 1.5% sir in fact we used to be ridiculed saying that this is the hindu rate of growth but in 1991 when p uh, the, the then uh, prime minister mr p v narasimha rao assumed office and finance minister was mr manmohan singh who later be, went on to become the prime minister for 10 years sir under these two capable leaders the economy of the country was opened up and after opening up of the country if you see that the, the, this government has given this white paper where they have talked about 20 years sir i would like to go 10 years further and talk about from 1994 what has been happening in 1994 india's gdp was 327 billion dollars sir in 2004 it went to 709 billion dollars which is a 115% growth in that decade sir and in 2004 what was 709 billion dollars in 2014 went to 2.01 trillion dollars sir this is a growth of 180% but if you look at what has happened in 2014 the gdp which was 2 trillion dollars has only grown to 3.6 trillion dollars in 2024 sir the growth rate is around 75 to 80% so it has not even crossed 100% sir had they done a better job probably the gdp of this country could have been could have touched 5 trillion dollars already sir uh, there is uh, certain people who make comments sir not from any of our party sir their own party person sir a rajya sabha member dr subramanyam swami has made comments saying that the honorable prime minister does not know anything about uh, economics and the finance minister knows nothing about what economy is or finances so this is a statement which is being made from their own party member and you expect us to believe that that 2004 to 14 when the country was run by one of the brightest minds in economy and finance and where the growth was about 180% and you claim that that period was a bad growth and this period what you are talking about your golden era this 10 years has seen great wonders sir sir in 2014 when the honorable prime minister the present prime minister when he was going to, was announced as a candidate do you know what was the poll promises he made he had made he said 2 crore jobs every year i will be able to get you i will get you 15 lakh rupees by bringing back all the money from switzerland which has been stashed away by politicians and they were saying that petrol and gas prices will become half and they also said that the us dollar the rate will be reduced but if you see after 10 years you are submitting a white paper where no mention about any of these things has happened and you are talking about when the prime minister brought in demonetization sir this white paper has no mention about demonetization and the effects of it and what was achieved 
We have all, opposition parties have all been asking for that. The, the concept of demonetization was they were saying that the amount of black money which is being hoarded is huge. The amount of counterfeit money is huge. And they said that they are going to bring all that money back into the government. Sir, when this was said, everybody was under the assumption that from Pakistan and Bangladesh, counterfeit notes were being pumped into this country where the economy is going to be totally smothered or sm smashed, sir. But RBI came out with a report and they said 99.7% of the notes which were printed the, by this government have come back. So this only shows the whole exercise of demonetization was a huge failure of this government and they have not mentioned a single word about that in this white paper, sir. Sir, subsequently when we see about how this government has tried to take away the federal structure of this country, in 2014 after assuming the office of Prime Ministership, when the 14th Finance Commission came out with a recommendation saying that the devolution of uh, funds to the states should be increased from 32% to 42%. The Honorable Prime Minister, this is mentioned by the then Chief Sir, Mr. Y.V. Reddy, who made a statement that the present Prime Minister opposed this and said that it can only be, should be increased only to 33, 33%. But the Finance Commission Chief, Mr. Y.V. Reddy, said that he had to put his foot down and ensure that 42% was devolved. But this government, surreptitiously to come over this problem, what they have done from 2014 has been only to increase the cess throughout the country, sir. So technically, by increasing the cess, if you look at the price of petrol, when during the Congress period in 2014, the cost of petrol was 60 rupees, the actual cost of petrol was 40 rupees, and 10 rupees was the state tax, and 10 rupees was the central tax, sir. And cess would have been something like 0.5%. But if you look at the present value of petrol, if the cost of petrol is 50 rupees, the central tax is 20 rupees, state tax is 20 rupees, and cess is 20 rupees, sir. So they are taking away 20 rupees from throughout the country, and they are taking that amount, and they are not giving it back. In fact, if you look at the uh, government, the last two years, they have imposed something called as a windfall tax on oil uh, companies, sir. This windfall tax is for making excessive profits, and they are talking about saying that the cost of petrol and diesel is now market driven and will not be able to control that. Instead of calling this as a windfall tax, you could have given the benefit to the people of this country, sir, where the price of petrol and diesel could have been brought down. And the price of gas, what was 400 rupees, has now crossed 1,200 rupees. It has seen a 200% increase. This is what this government has achieved in the last 10 years, sir. And Today they are talking about that they have alleviated poverty where 25 crore people have been brought out of poverty. So if that is the true figure, I would really like to appreciate this government. But in the same breath, they say that during Corona, the economy was very badly hit and the people were suffering. So 80 crore people had to be provided free rations. So 80 crore people were provided at the point in time is something commendable, sir. In, even in Tamil Nadu, even individuals, party people, everybody were providing that kind of a support for those who were needy. But you are now coming out and saying for the next five years, 80 crore people are going to be provided with free rations. So you are saying that 80 crore people cannot even afford to buy their own food. And you are saying that you have brought people out of poverty. 80 crore in a 140 crore population of India, 80 crore is more than 55%, sir. So more than 55% are dependent on the government for their sustenance is a very, very sad state of affairs. Sir, today we are talk they were talking about, Nishikant Dubeji was talking about scam, sir. He was talking about the 2G scam, the coal scam, Arcel Maxis scam, and all these scams, and they have only been making these accusations, sir. My question is, they have been in government for 10 years. Why have they not taken any action against any of these people and put them behind bars? If you had the proof or any kind of evidence, you should have taken some action about that. They are only throwing accusations and it is very sad that the parliament, when I, this is my first term as a member of parliament, sir. When I came here, I was hoping that we will be having great debates about how to take this country forward. But the only thing I see is bickering which is happening about the ruling government which has been in power for 10 years, accusing not the past government, sir, not 2004-14 government. They are talking about Jawaharlal Nehru, and when Jawaharlal Nehru died in 1964, I think the Honorable Prime Minister, present Prime Minister, would have been 10 or 11 years old. 
I don't know what kind of a fixation or uh, obsession he has with uh, Jawaharlal Nehru that every time he says that the reason why India is pathetic is because of Jawaharlal Nehru. It is actually very sad to see that a person, a tall leader, being belittled in such a fashion is actually very shameful. Sir. In 2015, sir, sir, one minute, sir. Sir, sir, we are talking about this present government is saying that opposition parties have corruption on them, they have nepotism on them, and these are the accusations they are making and they're having a poll plan. I will tell you, sir, corruption, when you're talking about this corruption, the CAG has come out with a statement saying 7.5 lakh crores of irregularities have happened in the Ayushman Bharat uh, cases and in road development. Where there was a ceiling of 18 crores to be spent per kilometer, they have shown that 250 crores was spent per kilometer and they have asked questions and this government, the treasury is silent on those kind of issues. I wonder whether they will, if they are really want to be fair about having the truth brought out, they should have set up some kind of a commission to inquire what was the CAG report and why is it that it has been brought out like this. Sir, today they are talking about uh, scams and uh, pro uh, co co corruption, whereas their own party president, one Mr. Bangaru Lakshman, at one point in time was caught red-handed where he was taking bribe. And he was... Kindly conclude. Sir, he was sentenced Kindly for that. Conclude. And also, our present Tamil Nadu, there we have one BJP president, sir, who openly makes a statement saying that every month I have an expenditure of 8 lakhs, which is provided for by friends. What is this if not corruption. And no action has been taken despite me writing to the finance minister and to the honorable prime minister to inquire into this matter about how he is getting this thing. Sir, the only thing I am very surprised about when the prime minister spoke was saying that hey, this is Modi's guarantee. Sir, are we trying to sell a product? I mean, like, I, I can't even understand what kind of uh, language this is, sir. To say that I am I'm giving you some product and I'm giving you a guarantee for this, what kind of language is being spoken? And what guarantee did you give when you said that you are going to give two crore jobs? Why, where did that guarantee go? Where, what guarantee was there when you said petrol and gas prices would be brought down? Where is that guarantee? Did you up achieve that guarantee? And you said 15 lakhs will be provided to each and every household by bringing money from Switzerland. Where is that guarantee? You have not answered the guarantees which you gave in 2014 and you come up with a new set of Joomla guarantees in Thank 2024 you. only for the sake of a political Appeasement, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Professor.